Hey everybody, Barry here again. I love weekends. They're the best time to get stuff done. After my girls get to bed and Cass is all settled in and I can come up here and spend four or five good hours and get some stuff done. What I'm gonna get done tonight is get this engine, transmission and all, permanently bolted to the cradle. Now I say permanently as if I'm not gonna take it out four or five more times, but I'll have the cradle like fully welded up, transmission mounts done. I got a pretty neat idea for transmission mount. I think it's gonna work really well so that I don't have a separate transmission cross member and engine cradle. It'll all be the one unit and it'll make a lot more sense when I start at it. So, uh, oh, I got more steel too. Here we go. I got two feet of two inch inside diameter and four feet of inch and a quarter inside diameter. The inch and a quarter inside diameter is going to uh, match up to that half moon shape piece from a transmission, um, well, cross member or transmission mount or whatever. And the two inch inside diameter is going to go across the subframe and connect the left and right control arm bushing, well, that area so there's no twisting and stuff there. Let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to get time lapse going. And I, what I'm going to do right now is leave the engine in the cradle for the first time. Put jack stands in under four corners, suspend the transmission, I'll keep the jack in under it or whatever, and then lift the body of the van off. Let's we'll see how tight everything is. Hopefully it goes up in one shot and we got no issues. We'll see. Would you look at that? Now that is something. Of course, I don't have transmission mounts made yet. So I got a jack there to hold it up so we don't break anything. Let's grab this transmission mount actually. We can see a real good look at it. Alrighty, now we can see what we got. I'm gonna put a piece of pipe across from right here to this side. That'll tie these two rear control arm bushings together nice and strong so there's no flex this way. And I'll come off of the transmission mount right here and go directly to the pipe and weld it directly to that. That way we got lots of strength most of the weight is going to be held by the front mounts anyway. This is going to be to stop any rear movement up and down. It's not going to stop any twist because of course it's only one bolt in it. But now I can really see what I got. This is all cool. Every bit of this is awesome. Really, really happy with how this has turned out so far. So cool that if I blow transmission, I blow up an engine, it's literally undo some exhaust, steering shaft, lower ball joints, and then lift the van right off of it. You know, wiring and stuff like that, whatever. But a whole lot easier than trying to pull it out of the rat rod in a space where it was not meant to be. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make my transmission cross member. First, of course, I have to plate this in right up to the front here, nice and solid. Same with this side, then I can make my cross member. So we'll get started at that.
Quick update in between welding. Got a couple things done in the last few minutes. I forgot to cut notches out of my motor mounts because you can see right here that we got these knob things sticking out and they hit the motor mounts when they're coming up through. I did this on a rat rod and it makes it very, very easy for the engine to come out. But we still got lots of material to weld to. There's over a quarter inch there, so that's good. And right here, I got the first plate it's pretty much sized up and tacked in. I still got to trim it a little bit, and I'll get at the second one in a second. After that, I'll get the cross member put across right here. And then you'll really be able to see how the cross member will stop all this from rocking like this because it'll be completely joined to the other side. I'm going to leave the fans on for a few minutes to get rid of some of this smoke. This plate is tacked in. This plate is tacked in. Now I can go ahead and cut our cross member. For those plates, I used 8 inch steel. That is a little bit thicker than what the cradle is made out of. So it's going to be just as strong or stronger as what was there in the first place. And I'll fully weld it all. Fully weld the cross member. And... Uh, it's going to be quite some unit. It's going to be a bit heavier than what was their factory, but I'd rather it be too strong than not strong enough. Neat! I know the fan's loud, but there's a lot of smoke in here. Oh yeah, that is tough looking. Sick. Now, I think I might lay the engine and transmission in and see what kind of stringers we can make for our transmission cross member. Alrighty, transmission is in. We got a half inch of space. I have to get my hand under, so that's all right. It's not gonna touch. And now we can see where our mounts are gonna go from this pipe up to here. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt in the transmission cross member. Wherever I put that. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna bolt it up to the bottom of this one. See about where the mounts are gonna go. I might have to trim up this one here a little bit. In no time, this will be fully suspended. Rear part of the transmission mount is bolted on. Basically, what I'm going to do now is take this piece that's far too long and that's going to go weld it on up here and then across here. And of course, that's a crazy angle. So I do have a couple of these weld on 90s. So when I get this cut to the correct angle, it'll have a nice round edge and come right out here. I'm going to try to get out right out to the outer edge. That way our transmission mount is nice and wide and it's not going to be going directly into the middle here. It'll have a wider footprint and take vibration and twisting forces a lot better. It's starting to come alive. Left side is done, which is 
seems to be so far the easy side because the right side we don't have as much room i think i'm going to cut it off about right here so i can make an immediate turn and go right back there and then i can pull the engine and transmission off and weld everything because all the brackets will be done then That will absolutely work for me. That's really, really cool. It came out really nice. I don't think it's too far back for to be back here. Most of the weight is going to be on this one. A bit of tail weight on the cross member back here. That all looks really good. I can't wait to have all this welded up and the engine put in and sitting in place finished. So what I'm gonna do next basically is pull the engine and transmission off of it again and completely weld up this cradle. Everything from motor mounts, transmission mounts, cross member, where I put the rack steering or steering rack brackets on. I'll finish welding up those. And by the time I leave here tonight, or tomorrow morning, this will be completely done. Progress. Okay, seriously, can we call it a tubular K-member now? There's like 5% of the original engine cradle left. <laughs> this is full race now, basically. I'm going to put you guys on super fast time lapse mode and get this thing all fully welded up. I had to take a break for a second, man. My lungs are on fire. So well, these stuff's hard on the gear. We're getting there. Taking my time, not welding too much at a time. I don't want to warp anything. Got a fan going so there's not stale fumes everywhere. So I was pointing directly at that big thing over there. But we're getting there. A couple more hours and it should be good to go. And then I'm gonna put the engine and transmission up in it, hook the ball joints up and move it out of the way. Got some more welding done. I think the top side is pretty much all finished up. I'll flip it over, start on the bottom. I braced up the rack mounts just on one side because I need to be able to put a nut on the bottom of here. I'm not gonna weld the nut on because I don't like when they twist off and then I gotta go cutting stuff up. So that's nice and strong. All of this here is done with 316 plate, fully welded. 
Let's start on the bottom. I'm on the last two pieces. Oh, I can't hear myself. I've done more welding this weekend than I have probably in the last six months combined. Oh, I love it, but I don't always miss it. Anyway, last two pieces. This is what we were left with before we turn this welder off. Oh, Mr. Fan. Anyway, so I'm gonna fill it in. Weld it in. It's also a 316. Everything on this is heavy. All the rest of the welding is done. Yes, it's flux core and it's ugly, but when I get it sanded off or wire brushed off, it'll be fine. Let's finish this up. Then I'm gonna put the engine in it. I guess. I don't really have to. I just got to get the van moved ahead because we got a detail coming in Monday and the van will be in the way. So move that out of the way. And, uh, oh yeah, CarQuest does auto detailing. If anybody in Central would like it done, 149 for a full detail. Comes out like brand new. So this got to be moved out of the way. I usually poke it up there in the corner somewhere. Although I would like to see it. Yeah, I'm putting it in. Who cares? It's like 2 o'clock now. I might as well just keep going. This is the last look over it before I bolt it all together. Everything's all welded. Plates put in the bottom of here, making sure everything is all nice and strong, braced up. Hopefully not warped up. There's a lot of surface area on that cradle and I did my best to bounce around and you know tap the metal with the hammer so it's stress relief and stuff like that. So we should be fine anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and set the cradle up, get the engine put on it. And after I get the engine down and laid in place, I'll bolt up the bottom ball joints as long as it can roll, basically. I like to get it down on the ground, see how it sits and how much weight is in the front springs and stuff. And then I'm going home because I was here till four o'clock yesterday morning by the time I got home, I was too wired to sleep, so I got to sleep about 5.30, and then my girls woke me up around 7.30. So I'm on like two hours worth of sleep, and it's now 2.30. So <laughs> it's time for me to go to bed. But yeah, let's get this pulled in first. I'm here wire brushing everything, making it look good, and look at this weld. I mean, it's not TIG, but... Jeez, I am absolutely okay with that. Here's our first real look at the engine sitting in the cradle after being fully welded. All bolted in, engine mount bolts are in, transmission is done, 
and everything fits perfect. Fits so well. We got room for a cross member under the transmission. It was really cool that I, that piece just went straight across. No bending, no fooling around. I had a couple 90s home in my garage that I wasn't using, so I used them on this. And obviously this is not symmetrical here, but I'm not really, really concerned about it being symmetrical. Looks really cool. It's gonna work really well. Everything's all welded. I do have to cap these in. Won't be tonight. Let's get the van down over this and get some wheels on it. This is absolutely magnificent. Look at it. Oh my God. It's crazy. There's nothing hanging below the cross member. Nothing at all. Transmission got lots of room. Yeah, I cut up a little bit more of the floor because the transmission was sitting kind of right there. This looks really good. We're not at risk of touching anything on the van. Not the floor, like the, what a transmission cross member. Nothing. So sick. That looks good from under here too. Can you get much more custom? Ball joints are connected. Wheels are bolted on. I don't have to rack in it or any tie rides or anything, so we'll see how that goes, but. I get really anxious to see how this thing's gonna sit, see how much extra weight is gonna be on the springs and see how low it's gonna be. Fun. Let's put it down. You know, it's actually not horrible. The front is higher than the back right now, it looks like. Now the back is loaded up with parts. That's a good sign. It's not completely bottomed out. That looks so good. We got a lot of fender up front. Look at that. And when the suspension starts to move and goes up and down a couple times, it will drop a little bit, half inch or an inch, but doing really well so far. We got a little bit of extra weight with a turbo going on there, but that's cool. I'm just mind boggled that this is working so well. Uh, I jumped on the suspension a couple times. And it looks pretty well the same, but we're doing good. I am, uh, I just swept the floor. I didn't sweep here. <laughs> you can see the difference. This is all metal. And half of that is in my sinuses right now. Not feeling so hot. So I'm gonna push this thing ahead. I'll come up tomorrow and clean up because I don't like leaving a mess. It really bugs me. So I'll come up tomorrow clean up all this stuff. It's not too bad because I cleaned up before I started today. And I'll sweep the floor and wash it down and it'll be all good. So that's it for tonight. It's been a long couple of days. I think I put in 20 hours, I think, this weekend alone. Not very easy when you got two little girls home. Sometimes you got to make time when everybody else is asleep. You got to put in, start just punch hours in whenever you can. That's it. <laughs> So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night.